Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Welcome to another half hour of Rural Heritage and RFD TV. Today we're visiting Horse Progress Days. Each year around the 4th of July, thousands of draft animal teamsters converge somewhere in the Midwest. The location rotates between towns in Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Michigan. This year, the 2018 Horse Progress Days was held at the Alvin Yoder Jr. Farm in Clare, Michigan, June 29th and 30th, where horse-drawn field equipment manufacturers demonstrated their equipment. Story Enterprises was on hand with their six-foot scissor-cut sickle pasture mower powered by a nine-horsepower Honda engine. In relatively flat terrain, this unit is pulled easily by one horse. While in years past, restored vintage McCormick No. 9 mowers are often demonstrated, this year Cattail Repair of Wisconsin demonstrated a No. 9 completely refitted with an ESM double action cutter bar replacing the standard sickle and pulley taking place of the pitman. INJ Manufacturing of Gordonville, Pennsylvania showed its ground drive scissors action sickle bar mower with closed gear box and 8 foot cutter bar. This mower can be fitted with optional skids to allow it to mow up to 6 inches off the ground and improved gearing provides even lower torque than past models. And if you prefer a McCormick No. 7 mower, Cattail Repair brought one of those refitted with an ESM double action 8 foot cutter bar and powered by a gasoline engine. Perhaps the most talked about new machine at Horse Progress Days was this 24-foot hay mowing machine brought by Family Farm Innovations of Millersburg, Ohio. It features an 8-foot central cutter bar flanked by two 9-foot bars, all with double action scissors action. The mower is powered by a 20 horsepower motor and equipped with hydraulics to lift the cutter bars. It has a battery operated foot switch to engage the mower a self-leveling seat, rear axle steering, and several more safety and efficiency features. A prototype at this time, it is expected to be on the market in spring 2019. New from Pequa of New Holland, Pennsylvania was a new line of rotary tatters. The local dealer for these models, which go all the way up to 28 feet, is Gateway Manufacturing of Clare, Michigan. Esch Manufacturing brought their 7-foot ground drive hay crimper. Interlocking rubber rollers crush the stems of forage plants as they pass through the machine creating softer hay and better drying conditions. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to 2018 Horse Progress Days. Powering a wide variety of PTO and three-point hydraulic hitch implements, the INJ Heavy Duty Ground Drive Cart continued to impress. Here it's powering a mower conditioner. The cart powers balers, pickers, brush hogs, and lots more. Here is its smaller cousin, the standard ground drive cart from INJ. It's powering a Farm King rotary rake.
Bob Erickson from Cashton, Wisconsin was on hand with his big team of donkey jennies, Olga and Bernice. Here they're pulling a Kingman rake and tedder fitted with a gasoline engine. The rake is manufactured by Hilltop Machine Shop in Shipshawana, Indiana. Here's another look at Olga and Bernice pulling the Kingman rake. Pioneer Equipment's 35 horsepower PTO cart provided the power for this Kubota rotary hay rake. ICM Machining makes this ground drive rotary hay rake that's pulled easily by two horses and comes with either rubber tires or steel wheels. Here's ICM Machining's tandem rotary hay rake being pulled and powered by Pioneer's 35 horsepower PTO forecart. Pioneer's PTO cart also powered this Farm King rotary hay rake. More people are learning the advantages and benefits of putting up loose hay. And while there's still plenty of antique hay loaders still out there, there's fewer and fewer every year. All crop hay loaders from Cashton, Wisconsin make this new all crop loader and sell it through Gateway Manufacturing in Clare, Michigan. There aren't a lot of round bale unrollers on the market for horse-drawn farmers. Many end up building their own and we've featured a few on Rural Heritage. Pioneer Equipment began making a round bale mover a couple years ago, but this year brought one that can be quickly converted to a round bale unroller. Be sure to stay tuned, we'll be right back with Produce Implements. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. Welcome back to Rural Heritage and RFD TV as we visit Horse Progress Days 2018. The Jordan Company from the Perche District in France brought their versatile tool carrier again this year. Here it's outfitted with their plow attachment. Next week's show will focus on plows and other tillage tools at Horse Progress Days 2018. But here's a preview of an old favorite being used in the produce demonstration, the Pioneer Footlift Plow, here with a KV bottom. Pioneer Equipment continues to make improvements to their popular homesteader implement 
which is basically modeled after a McCormick cultivator frame being used as a toolbar for a variety of attachments, including a cultivator, disc, potato plow, hiller, and, shown here, a harrow attachment. Since they were first introduced several years ago, cultimultures have transformed seedbed preparation. One of the first manufacturers of horse-drawn cultimultures was Shipshe Farm Supply, which makes a wide variety of units in many sizes. Here are their three-foot cultimultures put to work. Usually the field would be allowed to rest a day or two after plowing to give the dirt more crumbling capability. Even so, the cultimulture is doing good work here. A new player in the cultimulcher game, but one that has made many innovations, is Pioneer Equipment. Their four-foot cultimulcher, shown here, has a 90-degree turning radius where the articulating center rotates instead of skipping or dragging during a turn. The S-tines have a spring lift assist and maintain the correct angle when lowered. MFS, a local implement manufacturer, developed this cultimulcher which serves as a lower cost alternative to some of the more feature-rich models. Nonetheless, with teeth in the front, center, and back, and crumbling baskets between them, this machine shows how effective a cultimulcher can be in preparing a seed bed. It is sold by Yoder Farm Supply in Clare, Michigan. Plastic mulch is a boon to produce growers as it dramatically improves seedling growth by increasing soil temperature, protecting from moisture loss, and maintaining a weed barrier. Nolt's Produce Supply makes this plastic mulch layer. Easy Trail Manufacturing makes what they call the Ultimate Raised Bed Plastic Layer. It features a fertilizer hopper to spread fertilizer under the plastic with multiple gearing. Into the plastic mulch goes transplant seedlings. Here is Easy Trail's 110 gallon transplanter with water wheel. You need a team that is able to maintain a slow steady pace for this kind of work. Nolt's Produce Supply showed their 150-gallon transplanter that accommodates a variety of water wheels and can space plants from 5 to 98 inches and be fitted with five different spike sizes to punch the hole in the plastic. Agricultural sprayer manufacturer IVA brought a variety of sprayers including this 70 gallon high tunnel sprayer that can achieve a 72 inch crop clearance. Easy Trail demonstrated their Easy Position Sprayer model 7006 with double fan tips and individual shutoff valves. The operator uses two winches to extend the sprayer boom from the platform and raise and lower it above the crop being sprayed, in this case with water. Cultivating the soil between rows of plastic mulch is important to maintain weed control. The INJ Produce Cultivator is high enough to clear the growing crop when cultivating. A center cultivating gang can be added to make the unit a two-row cultivator.
With four wheels, the produce cultivator made by Miller Repair reduces tongue weight on the horse's collars. It also can be turned into a two-row cultivator by adding a center gang of cultivating shovels. At the end of the growing season, that plastic mulch layer must be removed. In the past, this was a difficult job, but some relatively new machines make it simple. Easy Trail makes this plastic mulch lifter wrapper for raised bed plastic mulch. The wheels disengage the plastic from the soil while the rotating spindle rolls it into a spool. The Todco mulch lifter wrapper uses a pair of large fingered wheels to completely lift out the plastic from the soil so none remains behind. Pioneer Equipment makes a produce cart that can be fitted with a variety of attachments useful to the produce farmer. Here it's seen leveling the raised bed after the plastic mulch has been removed. The INJ One Row Cultivator has plastic weed finger wheels that gently suppress weeds without disturbing the row crop. The INJ 5 tine Walk Behind Cultivator is an excellent value for the produce farmer. The best time to stop weeds is before they emerge. By using a tine weeder like this 16 foot model by Fairview Sales, every 7 or 8 days the farmer can maintain a relatively weed free cornfield. The versatile Pioneer Homesteader cultivates young corn with its cultivator attachment. Miller Equipment brought a two-row tine weeder that can be quickly converted to a cultivator or finger wheel weeder. This appears to be a growing trend among manufacturers, making implement frames to serve as toolbars to which a variety of attachments can be fitted thus saving the farmer money and requiring less space for storage. The Pioneer Equipment Tine Weeder covers four rows of corn and features a spring-assisted lift to pull the tines from the soil. One of the benefits for all these tine weeders is they need not be driven as carefully as cultivators nor are they limited to a specific number of rows or row spacings. Here we see Miller Repair Shop's four row tine weeder at work. When we come back we'll visit with Mona Lati from La Cellerie Percherons who visited Horse Progress Days from France for the second year to show their relatively new line of high-tech harnesses and collars. Hello, good morning, my name is Mona, I'm French. I work with Sylvie Bouchard uh, in the saddlery shop from France and I work uh, as a translator for um, Jordan Society. So we are here at the House Progress Day to show like two French companies. And we were at um, the House Progress Day in Pennsylvania last year, so we want to come like every year at the House Progress Day to show us the product. And so you came um, with uh, one company for the harness and the collars. Yeah. And the other and company I is. The other company yeah, has a translator for okay. the English. Yeah. Okay. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the collar. So the collar, we were inspired by the collar we are using in Paris for the 19th century, which called omnibus collar. So we took the same form, but we made it like a modern one and useful for all the people who can use it. So we had a padding in neoprene and magnesium and we changed you know the padding we put like holes in ma magnesium or aluminium for the lighter so you have like this one this color 
is 15 pounds so it's very light and easy to put on the horse's neck because you have different setting here and fitting so you can use it in a mule in different type of drab horse even if your horse just gain or lose weight you can adjust like all the time the colors and you have an open just here so you open it and you put on the horse's neck so the, uh, the adjustment can come in so you can make it more narrow yeah, you, this part goes down, so okay. you can adjust, and this part too, you have different holes, Okay. so you can adjust here. So for the mule, it would be much tighter, much more yeah. narrow, and for, for the horse. The, yeah, Wider. for the mule, we just had more padding here, because, you know, the neck of the mule are different than the draft holes. Uh-huh, yeah. And um, the, talk to me about the materials. What is it made out of? So we have different materials. We can make the holes in the first with magnesium and we can make it in aluminium. It's because of the weight. Magnesium is lighter. And after we put so the neoprene and we wrapped with the leather on it. And all the pieces here are in stainless steel. And this part is all plastic. And we use French leather to do this color. It's very good and nice materials of good quality. Um, so it's it's, um, it's um, less likely to cause discomfort with the horse because of the leather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You have. You don't need. To, you know to put like on the American collar, the collar and the hames. You have the hames included on the collar, so that's why you know sometimes the hames go like that on the neck. But with this one, you haven't got this problem. So the horse is very comfortable, and the collar just put very well on the shoulder. The pressure, you have not just one point. You have. Oh, it's spread really, around. Yeah, it's spread uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. And one collar then would be, um, you'd be able to use for a variety of different horses. Mm -hmm. In other words, you wouldn't buy the collar to fit the horse and then when you buy another horse, you have to get a new collar. You'd no. be able to use that same collar for the other horse. You can, yeah, use the same collar for like every type of horse. That, if you have like mules, yeah, Percheron, Brabant, like all the horses, yeah. You can have the same collar, just you make the adjustment and the settings and you can yeah, use the same. How much do they cost? So this one um, is the best one, the lighter one. It's 1,600 US dollar. Uh -huh. And after we have another model with just the padding under, um, under the neck. So we have less leather and less neoprene. And this one is 1,300 US dollar. Have you sold um, any or many in America? Not for the moment. Uh -huh. We are looking for dealer in America. Uh, we can like leave the collar here and maybe we really want to find someone who work with every day. In France we work like with people who work with uh, vineyards, uh, school transport, market gardening. Here it's a little bit different activities so we need to find someone who can represent like... The so if someone is watching the television show and they want to learn more and contact you, mm -hmm. What? Um, uh, wh who? Who should they contact? Uh, they need to contact CellerePercheron.com. Okay. Have the website, and on the website you can put uh, the language in English. Okay. So they can learn it easier for them. Sure. Yeah, and you have the document on the website about all the colors, all the different types of colors, and yeah, the mail, and we have a Facebook page. Where okay. We put a lot of video and photos about a lot of people who work with uh, with our colors. So. Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.